Hello and welcome to Dr. Nora's clinic. You may know me as Dr. Nora, the cosmetic GP, but did you know that I also have FSRH in my title? Well, what does that mean? It means that I have a diploma from the Faculty of Sexual and Reproductive Health, and that means that I specialize in sexual health and family planning. In this series of videos, I'll be taking you through the different contraception or birth control options that are available to you, ranging from the short-term options to the long-term, the hormonal and the non-hormonal options. Today we'll be talking about two long-term acting contraceptions. The first of which is the interuterine system, or the IUS, which in Australia is licensed as the Marina. The second is the interuterine device, also known as the IUD, otherwise known more commonly as the copper coil. Now what is the difference between these two? The IUS contains a hormone and the IUD contains no hormone. But what is a hormone? Well, we produce loads of hormones in our bodies and these are regulated in our body. In terms of the IUS, it is a synthetic hormone or a chemical that is released locally into our womb which is very similar to the hormones that we release naturally. And this chemical helps to prevent pregnancies. So let's talk in a bit more detail about the IUS. Well over here you can see an actual size of an interuterine system. It is a small flexible plastic T-shaped device that fits inside of the womb of a lady. It has a cylinder at the bottom here that you can see which releases a small and steady amount of hormone every day over a period of up to five years. In Australia this is licensed as the Marina, however in other countries there are other brands such as Skylar, Jadis, Lolita and Kaylina, as well as the Marina. Now how does it work? Well, if we take this model as the cross-sectional diagram of a lady's womb, we can see that the interuterine system fits nicely inside of the womb. And it works on three main ways. The first of which is that it changes the mucus inside the opening of the womb, otherwise known as the cervix. And by that way, it means that the sperm can't get into the womb and therefore cause fertilization. The second way it works is that it thins the lining of the womb. And that means that periods are actually a lot lighter and less heavier. And as a byproduct of that, it will also mean that the sperm, if it fertilizes an egg, can't latch onto the womb lining, therefore creating a pregnancy. And the third way that it works is that it works inside of the womb to create a hostile environment for the sperm itself, which makes it interfere with its movement so it can't move around in the womb. The interuterine system is over 99% effective, which is a fantastic efficacy for any birth control method. But how is it inserted? The interuterine system must be inserted by a qualified practitioner. Now that can range from a gynaecologist to a specialist GP to some specialist nurses also. The way that it is inserted is similar to having a cycle smear, whereby the speculum is inserted into the vagina, opening up the vaginal walls, and the interuterine system is measured along the womb, and it is inserted and it sits at the top of the womb like so. The whole procedure itself can take up to 10 to 15 minutes, depending on each case. It can be quite uncomfortable, so it's really, really important to take some painkillers beforehand, and that usually means taking some ibuprofen or some paracetamol. What are the advantages of having an interuterine system? Well, there are loads of advantages, the first of which being that it's over 99% effective as a contraceptive choice. The second of which is that in a lot of women, it will make the bleeding or their periods a lot lighter and less painful. And this is really helpful in patients who have got heavy period flow, which is not due to any abnormality inside of their womb. It lasts for five years and it's easily reversible. That means after removal of the interuterine system, fertility will resume shortly after. The other great thing about having an interuterine system is you don't have to worry about taking a pill every day or having a depot injection or taking any other birth control methods because this is all you would need. Having an interuterine system also helps to protect the womb lining in patients who are going through the menopause that are on hormone replacement therapy. This is something that you can discuss with your doctor in more detail if this applies to you. What are the disadvantages of having an interuterine system? 
As with any contraceptive option, there are some disadvantages that you should be made aware of. The main disadvantage with the intrauterine system is that it can cause some irregular bleeding for the first three to six months of insertion. Because the hormone is released so locally into the womb, there are less of the systemic side effects. However, some women do report that they do get some headaches, some change in their mucus, and also they may get some tummy aches or tummy pains. It's important to know also that the intrauterine system does not protect you against sexually transmitted infections, so you must always use a barrier contraception if you are concerned about this. While this contraceptive method is over 99% effective, there is also a very small chance that you could fall pregnant whilst having this inserted. It's very important to follow the aftercare instructions after insertion, and if you do suspect that you are pregnant, you must seek medical attention immediately. You can always check for pregnancy by doing regular pregnancy tests whilst you have an IUS in place. Let's talk about the copper coil or the intrauterine device. Unlike the intrauterine system, which has a hormone around its main cylinder, this instead has a copper coil. Depending on which brand you're using, the copper may be on the main cylinder of the device or it may also be on the arms of the device. In Australia currently there are two main licensed copper coils, the first of which is called Multiload, which covers you for five years of contraception cover, and the second of which is called the Copper T, which covers you for up to 10 years of contraception. Now how does the intuterine device work? If we look at this cross-sectional diagram of the woman's womb, we can see that the intuterine device sits very similarly to the intuterine system. The way that the intrauterine device works is primarily from the copper. Copper acts as a natural spermicide. That means it makes a hostile environment for the sperm. Therefore, the sperm can't get inside and can't cause any fertilization of the egg. It is over 99% effective and it's a very good long-term option for patients who do not wish to have any hormonal methods of contraception. Of course, you must not be allergic to copper to opt for this choice of intrauterine device. What are the advantages of an intrauterine device? Well, depending on which brand you go for, you can be covered for contraception for up to five to 10 years. It's over 99% effective and it doesn't contain any hormones. So for those patients who are quite sensitive to hormones, this might be a good option for you. And just like the intrauterine system, the intrauterine device is easily reversible. That means your fertility will resume shortly after it's been removed. What are the disadvantages of having an intrauterine device? Now, with any contraceptive device, it's important to take into account the disadvantages. For this particular contraceptive method, some women will report that their periods become heavier and perhaps more painful. This sometimes does settle over the first few months of insertion, but it's something to be mindful of if that is an issue for you. The procedure itself may be quite uncomfortable to insert, so it's important for you to take some painkillers before insertion. In addition, this intrauterine device will not cover you for any sexually transmitted infections, so it's really important to bear that in mind and to use any barrier contraception to help avoid this. What are the risks for having the intrauterine device? These risks are similar to the intrauterine system. They are very rare and uncommon, but it's worthwhile taking into account if you are considering an intrauterine device. The first risk that you should be aware of is perforation. Now this is a very small and rare risk that is associated with any invasive technique. There is a small 1 in 1000 chance that during insertion of the intrauterine device, the womb may be perforated, that means to have a hole in it. Now don't worry, sometimes that can just mean a few weeks of recovery and rest, or it may mean a short trip to the hospital. In about 1 in 200, the device may fall out. This particularly happens if the first period is heavy. You will notice if your device falls out as you should be able to see it and your medical practitioner will teach you how to check to make sure that the device is in the correct place. There is also a very small risk of infection. Now as this is an invasive procedure, the medical practitioner will be doing this procedure under very strict sterile conditions. It's really important to make sure that you're up to date with any STD screens and with your cervical screening program. 
So in summary, today we've discussed two long-term acting contraception options, the first of which is an intrauterine system which releases a small amount of a hormone locally into your womb that prevents pregnancy and this is over 99% effective. The second of which we've discussed today is the intrauterine device, which is a non-hormonal method. Now this works by having copper around its main cylinder, which acts as a spermicide, therefore preventing pregnancy. They both have their advantages and disadvantages. The intrauterine system helps to reduce the period flow and the period pain, which can be quite desirable in a number of women. It lasts for five years and it's highly effective and reversible. The intuterine device is also extremely effective. It's over 99% effective and can last for up to 5 to 10 years depending on which brand you go for. With each of these devices, you'll be left with a 2 to 3 centimeter thread that'll come out from the opening of your womb, otherwise known as your cervix. You should be able to feel for these as your doctor will teach you how to do so. This will just ensure that the device is in the correct place. However, your partner will not be able to feel these during intercourse. If they do, then it's really important for you to go and see your doctor. It's really important that you see an appropriately trained medical practitioner to have your device inserted. At the higher end, you can see a gynecologist who has over a decade's worth of experience in this field. You may also wish to see a specialist general practitioner who has been adequately trained in this procedure. The way that you can tell if a general practitioner has been trained is by checking to see if they have any acronyms after their name. For example, FSRH means that they have a diploma from the Faculty of Sexual and Reproductive Health, which means that they have had training in this procedure. Or alternatively, you can ask the general practitioner if they have any certification that they can produce to show that they have been trained in these procedures. There are also some specialist nurses who have been trained in the insertion of intrauterine devices and have adequate training to do so. Please do ensure that you seek an accredited medical practitioner as this is not a routine procedure that is done in general practice. Thank you for watching today and I hope that you have found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to write me a comment in the boxes below and don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And stay tuned for further videos in this series where next up I'll be talking about the implant or the rod in the arm and later on the depot injection. All that's left for me to say for now is take care and stay healthy.